Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolades at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Eerie333, and this next match is going to be Failthas versus Orphelius on Valis Marineris. And I haven't seen this map in a while. Failthas going for Cloaky Bot Factories, Orphelius going for also Cloaky Bot Factory. And I can kind of understand why. This is a weird map because while it is fairly large, I mean it's I think 18 by six 18 by 14, I think. It's a relatively large map. It's a relatively macro-oriented map. It's also a relatively hilly... 16 by 12. It's a relatively hilly map, which means that you are going to see a lot of bot factories used. Cloaky bots oftentimes. And then it's going to be usually trying to take the south and also trying to take the north. The center, not so much. When it's played as teams, you usually have either air and, air and ground or bot and vehicle. And then you have... Actually, air is usually one of the ones used, but still... So, one player can go over to the center and the others go over the hills. But in this case, of course, 1v1. Well, you only have one choice at the start, and that's going to be Cloakybot for each player. So they want to go for the hills, presumably. They'll probably try to take the center, too, just because that is where the more resources are. But they're also starting kind of at cross positions. Like Felthas over to the northwest and Norphelius over to the southeast. So, the Glaives will be out for a long time in this game. Probably the whole game. On a map like this, that's typically how it goes. You have glaives from start to finish. Although, on this specific map, it's sometimes... I don't know. You get glaives around the sides for defense, but then you also get a lot of situations where there's just too many defenses around. And then, of course, the glaives stop going there. They still come around and start to try to harass everywhere, but they don't go to those spots. Then, of course, you need to have your units. So we'll probably see glaives around the periphery with warriors and rockos and maybe some specters. More up front, and we have early raiding going on. Fail thoughts coming in already. One one kill for Metalist Strider. This glaive doing a nice job for itself. Another kill coming up. Defender just now able to get shots in, getting rid of the glaive, but two Metalist Striders down this early is not bad. However, Orphelius on point with that rebuilding. It's always the important thing. It's always what I always say. The difference between a good player and a great player is a great player rebuilds their metal Extractors as soon as they die, as soon as they can. Make sure that there's basically no downtime. Now, unfortunately, Orphilius is missing this one down here. Wait, Orphilius is throwing the towel already? No, I don't think so. Either that or Orphilius thinks that they're playing Istralid right now. That's the other option, I suppose. Trying to go into design mode. Make me new units! I don't like my current units! Bring me a fresh unit! But yeah, I don't think that's what's happening. At any rate, Orphelia's coming in on a nice flank, though. Felthos basically going to be fighting a lot of 4v1s here with these glaives. Although at this point, Orphelia's didn't get a lot of advantage off that, but still did deflect Felthos' initial attack. Unfortunately, Felt us now in that same advantageous position. Orphelius' force is getting picked off one... That's not what they want. Do not get picked off one at a time. You do not want that. Felt us should... Well, fine. Not much here. They're trying to harass the southeast. That's not going to go well. Orphelius should have no problem defending that while building up the northeast. But Felt us, on the other hand, they seem to have a much more solid economy. They definitely have a more solid metal economy and far more solid energy economy. Has Orphelius, been built Orphelius has not been building any energy-producing structures at all. Which is not ideal. They do have a nice tick coming in. Ooh, that tick is going to be actually not that effective. Because it'll hit this one glaive if it gets spotted out. And I know Fel I can tell Felthas knows it's there because it was close enough to the glaive to be seen. But trying to cut off the retreat path. This is actually pretty clever by Orphilius. Trying to cut off the glaive retreat path for Felthas. And well, yeah, it looks like it will. So forcing Felthas into a bit of an awkward position where they're either hitting the tick directly and they are going to get hit. Ooh. Nice dodge there. One glaive does get stunned out, but still, nice dodge by Felthas. So, Orphelius kind of pushing Felthas in tactical directions they don't want to be, but Felthas, on the other hand, with glaives to the north. So, even though this attack is kind of going south, to the south, it's not really going to be the biggest problem. I mean, it is obviously a bit of a problem because, you know, losing forces is not a great idea, especially when Orphelius could just reclaim this pretty soon, not immediately. But it's relatively close. If these glaives get knocked away, that's reclaim. But at the same time, the glaives are the north Felthas has, and not much else. Felthas continuing to go for glaives. My earlier prediction about the glaive usage 
That holds. I mean, at this point, why would you change? But Orphelius should be able to retake the south, and with that, this giant field of reclaim. And how much reclaim is there at that? 300 metal worth of reclaim. Actually, well, yeah, 350 metal worth of reclaim. That's pretty handy. So that would give Orphelius economic parity for about... Seven seconds? No, not seven seconds. 70 seconds. It would give him economic parity for about a minute. Which is not bad. And indeed, that... Is that what we're going to see? No. Instead, going for energy structures, which actually makes a lot more sense at this point. Orphelius was short on that, which I think is going to be their undoing at this point. Yeah, they lost a couple metal extractors, but at this... At this production level... I mean, they have one caretaker. They're probably accessing a bit of metal, honestly. That's the bigger problem, is they haven't had a lot of energy. They do now. So at this point, they're going to want to reclaim. I don't know why this particular conjurer is not reclaiming. It should be doing so. But they do have the energy infrastructure to support reclaim. They just need to actually go and do it. Still, trying to play the raid counter raid game. I don't see Orphilius winning that. Especially get Felthos. Felthos is just not even bothering with it anymore. Going for Warriors. They're done with the raid counter raid game. They are just going to go for straight muscle. And given that Felthos has a fairly large economic advantage... They can still get enough glaives to get away with it. They don't have to worry about getting hit too hard. And then, of course, warriors at key spots means the glaives for Arphelius can't just move around at will. Which is ideal. Felthos, once again going down south, trying to see what they can pick off. At this point, though, Arphelius just now starting to take the south. Whereas Felthos also hasn't taken the south, but Felthos started in the south, so it makes more sense for them to... Sorry, north. They started in the north, makes more sense to take the north. Orphelius started in the south and is taking the north primarily... And really, their commander is in a risky spot. But the Glaives didn't seem to spot it. I don't think Felthas even... No, Felthas has no idea. They know that the center's been taken, but they've been suspecting the south this entire time, and Orphilius has kind of been mind-gaming them a bit. Which we've seen before that Orphilius... They, they have a pretty good handle on the meta of maps. One of the earlier tournaments we saw them on Red Comet, basically setting up in one spot that was not expected... The problem, however, though, is while this is not a terrible mind game idea, it is a terrible economic idea. Because at this point, Felthos has essentially built up entirely where they're strong. They're built up where their factory is. Their reinforcement time is very short. Whereas Orphilius has been focusing on building up north to the north while there's factories to the south. So the reinforcement time is actually quite long. So Orphilius can't really expand into the center as strongly as Felthos can. Because Felthos, I mean, they're halfway into the center. Orphilius has not really taken that many center mexes at this point, just because they can't. Ooh, nice scythe use there, by the way. That was very nice scythe. But yeah, Orphilius can't push into the center that hard unless they go to the south. But they haven't been trying to hold the south that hard. They've been trying to take the north in order to make Felthos not sure where to raid or not be able to product productively raid. Unfortunately, that's just not working out as well as I think Orphilius had hoped. Good tick, though, but unfortunately not in the best group. It does help. It does split the army. doesn't allow for slaughtering those glaives en masse, but it does mean that Felthos's glaives can't be quite the overwhelming force they were to begin with. Still pretty overwhelming, though. Orphilius, oh, with all these glaives behind enemy lines and no easy way to get out of there, and Felthos pretty much having a clear run into Orphilius' base, even though the south hasn't been taken too much. That south side, what is there is going to be destroyed, and I think the main factory is going to fall soon after. Gunship switch for both players. Orphelius did get a couple rapiers, and Fel sorry, Felthas got a couple rapiers. Orphelius also getting a few rapiers now. They want to go for the anti-glaive force there. Rapiers rip glaives to shreds, but the problem, of course, is that Felthas just has the economy advantage, so they can easily, I guess I have some banshees, but they can easily get tridents, they can easily get some gremlins. So getting rid of Orphelius's air force, what fledgling air force there is, that will not be a challenge at all for Felthas at this point, not with 20 metal advantage. And Orphilius is not rebuilding their metal extractors. They were at the start, and I thought that was really clever. Well, not clever. That was just, you know, good play. But this metal extractor here, that's been idle. That's been dead for the whole game. This one over here has been dead for the last two or three minutes. These ones down south I can kind of excuse, but now that's open again, so they should be retaken. At least the ones back here should be taken. And Orphilius has just not taken the south, not defended the south. I mean, Felthos, yeah, they haven't been able to destroy much to the south, but that doesn't matter. Orphilius hasn't built anything to the south if... Possibly because of the threat of pressure. So Felthos is winning that the South War anyway. Felthos doesn't even have to kill anything. And just by Orphelius not building there, Felthos is doing their job. They're doing the job the 
pressure should be doing. It's just not direct, but it's still there. It's still effective. Like, once Orphelia starts building there and also starts getting that, but once Orphelia starts building down there fully, and it looks like they finally are, then Felthos will stop having that advantage. But that's been an advantage that Felthos basically was given. And I can kind of see the mind game potential, but at the same time, Orphelius isn't really taking advantage of that to the north. And also, Orphelius... Orphelius could have defended that south a lot more easily than they could defend the north. It's just that Felthos hasn't gone for the north, because Felthos figured, well, Orphelius is to the south, so I'll just deal with what's likely to be there, the natural expansion, which was never built. But then it made no difference. It might as well have been harassed. It might as well have been raided out. Heck, if it was raided out and was there before, that would have been more money for Orphelius. It would have been more fluctuation, but it would have been more money in, in the long run. These sides not doing a terrible job, but they are starting to get shot down. One of them down, another one about to go down. The harassment is really not doing a whole lot here, whereas Failthos, they've switched off from harassment. Well, they switched off to air harassment, really. Setting up rapiers and making it really hard for Orphelius to get around. Not... Uh, actually, it's not bad against the tridents here. Focusing down this tridents is a good idea. Orphelius still has five rapiers. It's actually pretty much got an advantage of rapiers right now. And they are starting to take the center, but Felthos has been so far ahead economically this whole game that Orphelius is still having a massive uphill battle and decides not to take it. And with that, that is the game. A little bit sad, but yeah. It's just... This south side, if Orphelius had taken it, yeah, Felthos would have threatened it, but Felthos threatened it anyway. Orphelius just let it go without a fight. That was the only difference. It's like, I could see potential mind game stuff going on with taking the north while having the factory to the south, but it's better just to have the money. It's really not worth it to try to... What are you going to mind game out? I mean, Felthos didn't really check the north, but what difference did it make? Felthos had a 20 metal per second advantage because Felthos took their entire side and took the side of the center that they could more easily defend because their factory is right there. Whereas Orphelius did not take the center, didn't take the south where their factory was, took the north where their factory wasn't, couldn't easily defend it, not that it really made a difference, but still, if Felthos had put pressure on the north, Orphelius would have folded faster than they did already, but they would have completely folded. This, there was nothing here. It was the commander, and that was about it. And the commander probably would have died if that many glaives had hit it. I mean, it only takes about six glaives to kill a commander anyway. So... That wouldn't have really worked out too well. So that was a very risky play from Orphelius, and I'm not sure what the benefit was in mind. Anyhow, next game is going to be Felthos and Capricious on Desert Needle Small. And there's a little comment Felthos has made about gunship start effectiveness, which makes me very curious about this game. So let's check that out. I'll be back with that, so stay tuned.